the 501, baby. Uh-huh. You know how we get down on the Whoopin podcast. Woo. Shout out OD, shout out G Holmes, it's the best. Big sexy. Yo, welcome back to another episode of the Woo Pig Podcast, where we talking about everything Arkansas Razorback football and basketball every Monday, when, Thursday, and Saturday. The Woo Pig Podcast is streaming on all major platforms, baby. <laughs> Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Twitch. Make sure you subscribe to us on all platforms. If you enjoy the audio version of the podcast, man, we everywhere Apple Podcasts, but we really rock with Spotify because you can switch between audio and video. And the Woo Pig Podcast is brought to you by our sponsors. 3M Electric, the official sponsor of the Woo Pig Podcast, serving Northwest Arkansas. They are your trusted commercial and residential electrical contractor. As an SDVOSB, they are dependable and reliable with no job too big or small when it comes to your electrical needs. Contact 3M Electric, 479-408- 9865 and let them know you guys over at the Woo Pig Podcast sent you. And man, y'all know who I got in the building. Oh, hold on. We got somebody new in the building, man. <laughs> we got SEC Mo in the building with us today, man. What it do, what it do. Oh, what's going on, Woo Pig Podcast family? How y'all yes, feeling this evening? Hey. You may, man, you may as well go ahead and make them holler for me, man. Like, <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. One time for the one time. Hey, and you yeah. all, you already know who else we got in the building. Oh, oh we got somebody else new Ooh. in the building. Oh, y'all hey. know that. Hey, oh. that's mama, that goes that man. It's <laughs> Coach Box, hot. baby. <laughs> so, yeah, we got a new cast of characters except for myself, uh, G, and the bad little brother, man. They on a the little comedy show. They going to hang out and kick it tonight. But hey, ain't no kicking in the night, baby. We talking about these hogs. Mm -hmm. They just lost to the Florida Gators by man. 22 points. Um, so we, we coming in to talk about it, man. Uh Mo, what, what talk to us about that box score, man. What the box score looking like, man? How who who did what? Bruh. Who we proud of, who we ain't proud of. Bro, let's just go on in, man. Tre Trevin Brazil had 26 minutes. He went three from ten from the field, one for four from four um, from three points from the three point line. He had one offensive rebound, six office, offensive rebounds, one assist, two steals, three turnovers, three turnovers, and seven points, bro. Then we got uh, what's his name? J Jeremiah Davenport had twenty five minutes. He went three for seven from the field, two for three from the three point line. Five for seven uh, from the free throw line, and he had 13 points. Then we had Tremont Mark, 29 minutes, 6 of 14 from the uh, from the field. 0 for 2 from the three-point line, and he had 12 minutes. Then Devo. Devo had – let's just say Devo had goose eggs across the board, bro. Straight zeros. No points, no free throws made, no three-pointers, no rebounds, no, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? In 11 minutes. Then you had Jalen Graham. He had 21 minutes. He had 10 points. He went four from nine from the field, 0 for three. I mean, 0 for 0 from the three point line. So he didn't shoot any free any three pointers. Then he had he went two for four from the free throw line. Then you got Layden Blocker, 24 minutes, four for seven from the field, uh, from the field, 0 for one from the three point line, six to ten free throws, and then he had 14 total points. Then you got your boy White Boy Rick, Joseph, Joseph Pinion, man. 22 uh, minutes, three for seven from the field, two for four from the three-point line, four for four from the free throw line, and he had a total of 12 points, man. So 
those are the top minutes and the top points for the Arkansas Razorbacks in this 90 to 68 thrashing uh by the Florida Gators, bro. I mean, I don't even want to talk about Florida's numbers, bro. They 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 just demolished Arkansas, bro. It it was bad. It it, it was uh it was domination, man. It, it was domination. Yeah. Uh box. Who played who played good to you, man? Who who gave that effort, man, that we want to see, man, for these hogs, man? Who giving that effort? Well, you already know my boy came through for me today. Pignon. I've been rocking with that dude all year, so Pignon came through for me today. Super Trump. Blocker came through for me. Blocker came through for me today. And I'm gonna no. explain something. I'm gonna explain something about everybody that's trashing on um Brazil. I talked to OD today. He finally seen it. If y'all seen that alley you pass that was old Brazil head, Brazil legs still ain't up on them yet. Because last mm-hmm. year that would have never got through. He's still battling back from a knee injury. That's gonna take time. And so I'm giving Brazil a kind of a small pass because his legs ain't up on him to even gauge him right now. Davenport played hard, but he just he needs to realize he can't jump. And so yeah. <laughs> da- Davenport, he definitely played hard, and he just limited by athletic ability. That's just the bottom line. He, yeah. uh, but he gave his all, man. Dude was playing hard, so you got to respect him for that. He, he definitely came out there and laid it on the line, and uh, I think that's what these hogs need, man. They, they need somebody who gonna go out there and play hard, yeah. regardless of their athletic ability. Effort is something that you can't teach. And Davenport came out there and he played it. He played his heart out. So big man. shouts out to him, man. man. I think he did, he played good. Hey, oh man. Hey, Box brought up a good point, man, because I've noticed this all season with Trevin Brazil, bro. He just hadn't had that spring like he had last year. I mean, the year but I mean when he before he got hurt. I mean, mm-hmm. he, I've seen him get caught on the rim trying to trying to uh punch a dunk down, bro. So I think Box is on to something right there. Maybe he is a little bit more injured than he's putting on right now, bro, because his performance or his 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 jumping ability hasn't been there, ha- like it previously has been. He missed a so, dunk today. I I think uh, with Trevin Brazil, like they say, man, it takes two years to really come back from a, a injury like that. So. And they said it's not physical, it's mental. So he's been he's barely just right at a year right now. So he still got a whole year to go before he mentally recovers. And it's not like it's his first one, it's his second one. So mm. yeah, I mean you can see a lot of times he comes down and he starts grabbing that leg and he start you know, it, he just ain't sure of it. Yeah. So I can see that. I I, I definitely understand what box is coming from and I think we we may be a little too hard on him because of the injury, but man, I I just would like to see more from Trevor Brazil, man. But yeah, I'm gonna give y'all I'm gonna give y'all a prime example. Tony Pollard from the Cowboys, he just coming in the form hmm. after a whole year of playing, and he hurt his At leg. The last perfect year time. Too. At the perfect time. Yeah, but Joe's opinion played 22 minutes. Played, got twelve points, three of seven from the field goal, from the from and two rebounds, one assist, one block. Hey, give mm. it up, give it up. Mm. See, everybody, everybody mad at me because of what I said about Joseph Pena. Hey man, look here, I motivated Joseph Pena to go out there and do his thug, do his thug thizzle today. And Musselman, he know he listening to what we talking about. He gotta be. Joseph he gotta Pena be. Ain't, he ain't been on the court all year, and now you want to put him he out gotta there. Be. Y'all better go back and watch my clips because I called Musselman stupid for not playing Joseph Pinion in the zone situation. Who you got out there today? Joseph Pinion been playing. And all I'm saying is, and I'm going to say this again, if Joseph Pinion ain't going to play, you ain't going to let him play, Joseph Pinion should hit the portal. Because clearly he can play some ball, right? He can play a little bit of ball. There's no way he should yeah. be at the, on, the, on the bench wasting away. I stand by what I said. Hit the portal. If, yeah. if Musselman ain't going to play you, man, don't waste your life just because you're from Arkansas. Bruh, don't do it. Don't waste your life away sitting on the bench just to say, I was loyal to the Razorbacks. Man, go get your – hey, go out there and make a name for yourself, even if it ain't here on with the Razorbacks. 
That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. Stand on business. Uh oh. I mean, you I s I think you definitely had something to do with him getting as many minutes as he did today, bro. Like we hadn't seen Joseph Pinion all season long, especially at twenty two minutes in the game, bro. I mean, but to be honest with you, he was probably one of the most consistent players on the court from what we see. We just went over the over the stats. I mean, he was three for seven from the field. Two, he went fifty percent from the free uh, from the three point line, and he was a hundred percent from the free throw line. Like the the team overall, bro, shot sixty eight percent from the free throw line. That tells you a whole lot. And in comparison to Florida, bro, Florida was seventy five percent from the uh, from the free throw line. Come on now, free throws are free. If you can't shoot free throws, you're not gonna win a whole lot of games. Point blank, period. And Joseph Pena showed up and showed out, bro. I think it's going to be a tough 1v1 battle for you, O. Hey, man. Look here. I'm dropping Joseph off, man. You hear me? Bro. I'm dropping hey, off. OD. Hey, OD. Hey, OD. Hey, you OD. Jay, you going to be out there jacking shots. Hey, I'm dropping OD. off. OD. OD, you ain't beating my boy, so just kill it. Ah, right, man. Please. It's all fun, Kill it with, kill it with a skillet, man. We're going to do it for yeah, cheer, you ain't man. beating it's, my boy. Kill it. We gonna, it's all fun. It's all in fun. <laughs> Hey, we got a John Davis clone in here. Talking about, oh. <laughs> I was I was about to ask you about that. Hey man, I'm not buying into this stuff that these boys being here trolling. Oh, <laughs> uh, <sighs> let's see here, man. So we so we like the effort we got from Davenport Blocker. Mm-hmm. Blocker had a good game and Pinion, man, they played good. Um, they did, but, but but Musselman sent a message to Devo Davis though. He what, sent a what, message what's to What's the De- message? Oh, Devo. Uh, Keon Minifield, uh, mm. who uh, Khalif Battle, L. Ellis, L. Ellis. Yeah, he was already kind of in the doghouse. But those those three dudes, hey, Musselman put them boys on the bench. They he didn't did get, that. They Keon Minifield got Khalif, hardly any minutes. Bro, Khalif Battle had two minutes. Keon Minifield had three minutes. L. Ellis had three minutes. Come on, bro. Them, them your top scorers right there. Yeah. Y'all do know, y'all do know Devo ain't scored in two games, right? Yeah. He was terrible Not even against a free Auburn, throw. too. Not even a free throw. That boy Man. was so bad against Auburn, he sat on, on the second row on the bench. This is what I think. I think if you, I mean, right now we need effort. I think the yeah. starter should be Blocker, Pinion, um, Marks. Brazil, because I'm gonna ride Brazil because you gotta he gotta play out of that. And Bayfall. Yeah. Because what Bayfall is gonna give you is is, is hustle. Yeah. All game long. That what you ain't getting. They're gonna give you determination and effort. <laughs> and so hey. I, that's my starting five next game. You know what though, Box? Jalen Graham, aka back me been balling though. He's I six mean, man. Let's go he's ahead a, and give Jalen. Yeah, let's Let's he give Jalen Graham his flowers, bro. He, he, I don't six disagree man. with he that. He gets too tired. Yeah, Graham I don't disagree with that. Man. But he definitely putting up numbers, bro. He had twenty one minutes. He went four for nine from the uh, from the field, and he he put up but ten him points. And, I mean, him him Brazil play the same same position. Mm. Mm. So they fall. So you saying they fall just out there. So you saying, Box, you would rather have Brazil out there on the court other than Jalen Graham? I mean, truth be told, coach. truth be told, I I put Jalen Graham out there before I put uh, Twinkle Toes, Makai Mitchell. I mean, Makai Mitchell was out there taking up space today, bro. I mean, the only thing he was good for was, re- was rebounds. And he only had four of those. He had no points. In 22 minutes, he had no points. You, if you if you put Graham out there first, we ain't got nobody coming off the bench to score down low. That's when okay. you bring him off the bench and, and substitute for Brazil. Okay. Man, this I mean, I, I hear y'all saying everything y'all saying, but the the honest the the black two sugars is this team is on life support, baby. Yeah. This team yeah. is on life support, and bro. Hey, they they need they need Jesus, bro. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep it a buck it with you, bro. They need Jesus. Yeah, it ain't getting no better. These dudes can't play defense. Mm-mm. They, I'm sorry, man. I just I gotta be real. They can't play defense. 
Every time somebody give him an up fake, what they do? They jumping. Trevor yep. Brazil jumping so high, he almost out of bounds. Every time somebody give him an up fake. Bro, just just stand down, just stand down and just put your hand up, bro. You ain't got to jump. Uh blocker did well, the same did. thing. Get somebody gave him an up well, fake. You, Dude got to the rack and punched it. Yep. It, it's a when you can't jump. Yeah. When you can't jump, you're gonna block it. You're gonna try to block everything. Brazil can't can't jump right now. Last year, Brazil had timing. But when your legs gone, you're gonna go to for them pump fakes. That's what's mm-hmm. wrong, Brazil. Well, it's not only that though, bro. Like if you can't score, you're not gonna win games. We all know defense gonna win your championships, bro. But if you can't score, bro, you're not gonna win games point blank, period. You're not gonna if you can't score, you're not gonna have energy to get back on defense. You're not gonna have that enthusiasm if you don't see the ball go in the hoop. You just gonna be lollygagging back up the court, bro. And that's it's it's a cycle they in right now. They in a three game yeah. losing streak. They they can't they coming off a three game win streak to 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 now a three game losing streak in the worst time in the SEC, bro. They they in the SEC schedule right now. They zero for three in the SEC, bro. They shot thirty seven point seven percent from the field as a team. That's under forty percent, bro. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. That's absolutely atrocious. On the on the flip side, bro. Florida shot forty nine point three percent from the field. They shot almost 50%. Florida was shooting these boys out the gym. If your leader, if your senior leader can't can't get himself together, bro, quit paying your fi- – man, I know he watching this, this show. Devo, bro, this team needs you to step up right now, bro. Stop yeah. painting your fingernails because <laughs> your fingernails are getting more traction and more attention in your basketball play, fella. Ain't nobody bashing you. Ain't nobody talking bad about you. We giving you the real. And if you can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen. Because if you don't put up points, if you don't put up numbers, you're not going to the league. Point blank, period. You're going to be in Northwest Arkansas doing NIL deals, or you're going to be in Little Rock as a manager at your favorite yeah, let store. Me explain, let me explain something to y'all about Devo. I, I mean, I told y'all about him first of the year. Devo give you three or four games a year. That is it. He gonna show up three or four games a year. It's just have to one of them in the NCAA tournament. It ain't like Devo show up out of thirty two game season. Devo show up three or four games a year, and everybody like, oh, that's Devo. He's our savior. He's our savior. No, he ain't. Man, hey. Devo shines during during the tournament. That's when Devo shines. But the way this team is looking, they not even gonna get a bid. Nah. They they not. That's but, over. But my question, uh, based off of something you said, is these players beyond criticism from podcasters. Mm-hmm. What do you guys think about that, bro? If my thing is this, if you're gonna be if you're gonna be a public figure. What do you think it's going to be like in the in the NBA when you got a whole city against you? The the state of Arkansas is all we got in Arkansas, bro. Arkansas Razorbacks are the pinnacle of our sports experience because that's the only true allegiance we got. Yeah, you got Cowboys teams, but that's regional. Yeah, you got St. Louis uh, Cardinals fans, but that's regional. Everything other than the state of Arkansas and the Arkansas Razorbacks is a regional sports experience for us. When you go to a city, say New York, the Knicks, when you go to a Dallas Mavericks, when you go, if you're trying to go to the league, you got to be a grown man and you got to grow thick skin, point blank, period. Because those those fans, they don't care. They cutthroat, they more cutthroat than anything. You think this so bad? Just wait till you get up there and those reporters start asking you tough questions with the camera on you. Mm-hmm. Nobody's, the, the school ain't going to be able to save you at that point. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they better get over it because this is what they wanted. They wanted NIL. They wanted money. They wanted to get paid. They wanted that experience. You got it. So now you gotta you gotta take what come with it. The criticism is gonna come with it. Absolutely. So Which, I, they they better get over it. What you think about that box? Are they beyond criticism? I was talking, I was talking to somebody today. It was a little rock kid playing at Kansas. He played two snaps this year. He made seven grand a month. When you start making money like that, 
you huh. open for well, you open for whatever. Yep. So when you when you accept that scholarship, you no longer a kid. You're a kid when you're in high school. When you get out of high school, you no longer a kid. And that's the that's that's the that's the name of the game. That's territory you're getting into. So you just gotta accept yeah. it. If you don't want to accept it, get out. Mm-hmm. So that's that's how I feel about it. Hey, what what they call you when you get paid for performance, guys? An employee. <laughs> that's what you is. <laughs> Hey man, shout out to Boss Hog, man, for the super chat, man. We appreciate you always supporting the channel, man. He says, I guess Devo is going to blame the Woo Pig podcast for today's blowout loss. Hey. Man. Hey, that Boss Hog. Look at his stat line. We have been we've been getting thrashed on tw- on Twitter all week long about our content. And we the reason somebody literally said today it's because of the fans that the hall the, the players are having such a bad season. <laughs> what? Man, what are you what kidding? fan have you seen suit up and go take a snap? Not one. When they can an, when they can answer that question, tell them to tell them to shut their pie hole. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it's insane the, the 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 stuff that you see on Twitter, man, and and boys out here, they just be running their mouth on Twitter. And it, it's just so hilarious that these dudes really sit here and be buying this Kool-Aid like we got to support the team and we got to be rah, rah, rah all the time. And I'm like, nah, bro, these boys been losing nah. for 30 years, bro. What you talking about? It's time for us to talk talk yeah. about it and be real about it. And, and you know what, oh, to that point, bro, whenever Arkansas fans have – the least the even the smallest amount of expectations for our teams even the football team bro they don't never show up but when we don't expect nothing from them they ball out like i can tell you like this before but like a, a couple seasons ago when sam Pittman first got here i had no expectations of that team but you know what they balled out we won we, we won what eight eight nine games and to, to prove my point, bro, even this year, because the basketball team has done so well, two consecutive elite eights, a sweet 16, and now you put together this, this monster of a scoring team. Like, everybody on this team is, is supposed to be a shooter, supposed to be a scorer. <laughs> but you got too many chefs in the pot right now, and that's the problem. Look at us. we Bro, we are 9-7, and seven. 12th in the SEC. Nobody saw this coming. Nobody. If you if you thought that this team would be nine and seven and zero and three in the SEC right now, you're a liar. I'm sorry. Nobody expected this right now. We expected this team to make make the tournament. So well, my, it ain't the fans' fault, man. My thing is, for the last two or three years, we Arkansas been doing good. Yeah. During that time period, they've been calling. For calling for Calipari and they play his head, so it just ain't in Arkansas. It happens everywhere. Arkansas people are just more sensitive when you're talking about the Razorbacks because they mm-hmm. can't see past the Razorbacks, so you can't say nothing bad about them. I was talking to somebody today. They was they said on Facebook that you can't blame the coaches. Yeah, ain't nobody past criticism at this point, including the coaches. Nobody. Man. Nobody. Nobody. I don't, that's I don't know who said that's that. Coach Mutt. Man, hey, I call that some. I call that person delirious, bro. You crazy? <laughs> bro, I'm telling you, boy, they wild out here. Hey, little Joker, shout out to you, man. He said, "Tubby Smith told Nolan, man, you need to get some men." Nolan got a ring after bringing in Big Nasty, Darnell Robinson, mm. Dwight Stewart, Lee Wilson. Mm. Must need some men. Hey. hey. Hey, you need to blow the horn on that. That's real Dang. speed. I got, I got a question for y'all though. I got, I got, I got, a, I got a question for both of y'all. Y'all Go think, y'all think Must should have got rid of the other Mitchell? Nah, I nope. don't. We, nope. We, we see that we need big men, and I, I wish I'm gonna nope. go get the clip when I said our Achilles heel is when we play somebody with bigs, they gonna dominate mm-hmm. us. In Florida, yeah. bigs dominated. Them big boys Bruh. was dominating. It's been I like that, that all season. The reason I say that is because last year, what one couldn't do, the other one could. Yeah. Yup. 
So yep, you had yep. two. They and played one. off each other. Yeah, yes. they played off each other. And and I I also said that when they when they started the season, bro. Yeah, we got heightened athleticism, but bro, we don't have any weight. These boys gonna be getting pushed around out here, and that's exactly. Exactly what's happening, bro. You can go all the way back to the UNC Greensboro team uh, game, bro. They big man was going crazy on us, bro. I I could pull up the stats on that. Then Oklahoma went stupid on us, like, bro. This this group of this group of kids or this group of men, as I should say, they they just ain't got that. They ain't got no dog in them at all, bro. Man, I was None I was whatsoever. watching. I was watching uh earlier today. I was on Tusk Talk with Ty's uh, podcast, and somebody in the comments was like, "NIL has ruined college sports." And I thought about something. Uh, Kenny Smith says, it, "It's hard to eat." He's like, "When you hungry, you can eat soup with a fork. Mm. When you ain't hungry, you you are all right." So the problem is these dudes yeah. ain't hungry no more. They nah. ain't hungry for success because they already mm-hmm. got it. You give, you give. I mean, you just think back to your our childhood. You give me a million dollars and then you want to tell me I to go work, bro. You already yeah. gave me my money. You yeah. you gave me my money. I'm I'm good. I'm about to go out here. I'm riding good. I'm looking good. I got these gals, bro. <laughs> I made it. I'm not finna yeah. work work hard for what? Yeah. So yeah, nil. I blame nil. It has it's it's the wild wild west. Boys just don't even care no more. You see what happened to Alabama? Coach Saban quit. Everybody and their mama yeah. hit the portal. Yeah. Jalen Mills. Hey, Saban chunked the deuces on them. Hey. A dude from. Uh, I want to explain. Go for it. I want to say something about Musk. Because he is not getting away that easy. For for our players to just be practicing the zone for two or three days is ludicrous. That's something you should practice in the offseason. That means his mind is so one track that it's, it's, it's sad. So part of our problem is must too. Don't get it twisted. Part of our yeah, problem we got right is. now is Coach Must. Hey, hey, and I say this, just based on his body language and his uh in his interview and like his post game interviews, bro, he's a sore loser. Like, don't get it twisted. When he when we winning, he taking his shirt off. He he swinging it around his head like a helicopter. He on his Petey Pablo. But as soon as we lose, as soon as we lose, he's sitting there with his hands crossed, not looking at the camera, not wanting to answer questions, bro. That is terrible sportsmanship, and that's a bad example for your players because then they feel like they can soak as well. No. Man, get out there and coach, bro. You said these boys been playing zone for what What uh, box? Two, three days? That's terrible. Two or three days. That's a, fundamental, that's a fundamental defensive scheme in basketball, and that zone is killing Arkansas. When a, when a team gets set, Arkansas ain't got a chance, bro. They can't dribble drive. Their ball movement is terrible. Their off ball movement is trash. They can't score. They fall apart. And I know I'm sounding mad right now, but bro, it's it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to lose to Auburn 83 to 51, Georgia 76 to 66, and then Florida 90 to 68. Bro, y'all ain't got a chance the rest of the season if that's what y'all gonna do. Y'all got Texas AM next week. Then you got South Carolina, Ole Miss, Kentucky, Missouri, LSU, Georgia again, Tennessee, Mississippi State, Texas A&M again, Missouri again, Vanderbilt, Kentucky, LSU, and then Alabama. Bro, that slate is ugly. Hey, can, I, <laughs> hey, can I say something? Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm going to say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something I, tell, I showed y'all today, OD. I see the comments where you got the, the fake John neighbors and the fake <laughs> Now we got Hussle fake Clark. Clark in here. Hey, but check this out, y'all. I want y'all to understand something about us. Man. When you get so high, you never seen nobody throw darts down. You always throwing darts up. So y'all keep throwing them darts it up, us, because we oh we above y'all. We ain't coming back down mm. to y'all levels. So y'all keep throwing them darts at us, 
You're going to keep missing us because we so high above y'all. It don't even matter what y'all said to us on here. So keep throwing them darts at us because we're going to still keep winning. Hey, bro, let them talk. Let them talk. Yeah. Let them talk, man. That's that's you know what? Whenever you got haters like that, bro, that mean you that mean you shaking the spot up. That mean you doing something. You disturbing the atmosphere, oh. Man, they can catch bro. a tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> that's what they can do. Hey, I, I mean, it's just crazy that people so they just so bent out of shape about some dudes on Let here telling be. the truth, man. It, Let them be, just, oh, yeah. man. That's hey, the one, beauty one of it, I man. See. Hey, one thing I seen somebody say, us black guys didn't kick Tonka Todd off. Tonka Todd is sick. So whoever yeah. said that in the comments, Tonka Todd yeah, is John sick. So, Fake John so Abel said that, bro. So instead of talking about him, y'all pray for him. Pray for Tonka right. Todd, baby. Right. Because Tonka Todd is truly sick, right. bro. Y'all need to pray for Tonka. Right. Hey, right. why y'all out here running your mouth? Only the real ones rocking the Discord. We know what's up. So, yeah. hey, stop it. <laughs> man like i said like i said they can catch a tea bag and you know what you know what cat williams said cat williams said the truth don't need motivation bro right and, and winners are winners are not allowed to let losers rewrite history so shut your mouths right all hey. them haters fake john neighbors all of them shut up and if you and, and if john neighbors if that's you in the con in, in, in here running your liquors hey that go to link you can click on it and come up and kick it and Man, uh, I don't nobody want to. Yeah. want to see his Maybelline. Don't nobody want to see his Maybelline face. This guy. And <laughs> hey, we got Button in the building, man. What's going on, bro? How you hey, doing tonight? Oh, Button, you gotta turn your TV off. Doing you always doing doors up. Y'all keep throwing them doors up. Button. We ain't coming back down to y'all left. Y'all keep throwing them doors up. Well, Button didn't want to say nothing, so we'll put him back down there. John Neighbors, <laughs> he out of there now. <laughs> and and Hustle Clark, if that's you, you know the link. The link is down there. You can click on it. But we know somebody who ain't scared to come up and talk to us. I'm biased. Talk to us, man. Are these players beyond? Are they beyond criticism, bro? Man, everybody having problems tonight. I'm biased. Yeah, look like everybody freezing up tonight, oh. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with these guys tonight, man. It's all good. Kick, I'm going to kick him and. He'll die back in. Somebody said, Lo shout out Lauren Clark, man. The Woo Pig podcast got these other podcasts slash reporters going crazy. Barbershop can't be duplicated. You heard me? Huh. All right, here we go. Let's see if we got, um, I'm biased. Can you hear us, baby? He keep freezing. I don't know what's, yeah, I don't know what's going on yeah. tonight. I think I think he might be at work though. Yeah, he usually yeah, look is. like he is. Let's but man, this. like I was saying, bro, anytime you got haters like that taking notice, bro, they see what you they see what the Woo Pig podcast is doing, bro. You guys have had players come on and do interviews like like that. How many how many people have had players actually interact with them on Twitter like that, bro? That that hate is real. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Especially yeah, when you get it out the say. mud like the Woo Pig podcast. And let's see what he got to say. He ain't been on in a minute. I want to hear what right. he got. I want. I want to hear what is uh, that Daisy? No, nah, oh, I want to hear what I want to hear what Cleveland got to say. I want to hear what St. Louis or Cleveland got to say over there. That's Daisy up there, bro. I'm just saying, what's going what on? What do, with you, family? Baby? Hey, that was a going? quick show, Daisy. I ain't seen Daisy in quick, forever. That was a that was a quick show, Daisy. Hey man, it was a good one though. I ain't gonna lie, they did their thing, man. I, I had I had to get some type of justice after that game I saw today. I needed some some true entertainment. <laughs> man, that hey, we game let, was terrible. We gonna let him, I'm just saying do his thing. I'm just saying, man. How you doing tonight? Pretty good. What's going on, fellas? 
man, we doing good, man. Tell me what you think about that game today, man. What you think about this team in general? Well, this might surprise you guys, but um, in a lot of ways, I agree with a lot of things, Box. Um, opinions, you know, like just across the board, the players are not the problem. It's not effort. To me, the main problem with this team is at the coaching level. And that's not to say Mus is a bad coach or anything like that, because he's proven himself. He's a good coach. But I think what's happening is, you know, Mus, you know, he came to college and he had certain advantages because he, t- he took certain pro strategies and applied them to the college game, and that gave him an edge. But what's happening now is, you know, teams have adapted. You know, you come in, you have success. Teams and scouted you. You know, everybody put a mark on your back. They figure out what you do, and then you have to adjust. And what's happening is kind of like, um, you know, Box was saying, Musk is very rigid in his approach to the game. You know, and now to his credit, I've seen this year that he's, you know, he's tried to make adjustments, but he don't like to do it. He don't want to do it. And the zone uh, defense thing is a perfect example. You know, and I, I've been on um, online, too, talking to people about these things. You know, why won't he play zone defense? Because that was my thing with Pin- Pinion. You know, they was always saying, well, he can't play defense. You know, that's why we, we can't get him on the court. Well, Nolan had Pat Bradley. Pat Bradley and Scotty Thurman, a lot of these guys, and I said this on the Woo Pig podcast before, Arkansas, even when they had that national championship team, they had plenty of guys that weren't like necessarily defensive stoppers. But Nolan would adjust to the talent he had if he had he liked the press. But if teams were beating the press, he'd get he get out of the press. He liked to play man to man. But if man to man went working, he would go with zone. You know what I mean? But must is so one track minded that he won't adapt to his players in, in their capabilities. And let me say this too, as far as like the problems on defense, um, you know, he likes, you know, and I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. You know, Musk has this attitude that, um, you know, he has this NBA analytics approach. So one of the analytics is whoever wins the three point battle is going to win the game. So his defensive philosophy is tighten up on the guys out on the three-point line. You don't help on defense. You lead the guy one-on-one and trust him to make that stop on the guy that's driving. And that problem did not start this year. It's been happening the last three years that I've been watching Muss's teams. And you can go back to last year and the year before. You would have certain little guards going one-on-one against these supposed defensive stoppers we've had and beating them over and over to the to the hole, and we're just giving up easy layups. And that's just because Musk won't tell his guys, look, look, get a guy some help. If he's getting beat to the goal, do not let the guy have that open lane and because he don't want to leave the three. You know, and, and it's stuff like that that's, that's really costing him and catching up with him, and he's not quick enough to adjust, and it's costing him right now. That's absolutely true. But, hey, yeah, unbiased. We got to come to you because you've been waiting for a minute. I know you at work, baby. Talk to us, man. Hey, and shout out, I shout appreciate out you. you. What's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? Hey, man, we good. Well, let me give you a quick shout out, man. Shout out to you for holding down the Pick podcast on Twitter, man. Thank you for getting at them trolls, baby. Well, I'm, I, I'm, it's more than the trolls now. It's people that are prominent uh sports analytical yeah. people for Arkansas Razorbacks. They're coming at y'all, but the thing is, the thing that bothers me is they're not getting any context behind anything. You know, they're not getting any context. And, you know, they just jumping out, you know, the, the airplane without a parachute. And it's just so annoying. And I think what I've said this rub people the wrong way is our fan base is soft to some degree. And then we don't have the right expectations and consistency. The reason why Ohio State's and Alabama's are good in football and the North Carolinas and the Dukes, they stay good at basketball is because they have a certain amount of accountability that they hold the team to. And if they don't go reach that level, they come in at their neck. And if, they, and if they're not also reaching that level, 
they're going to get hurt from the pockets because the, the, the fans are not going to pay to see a garbage product. But we so soft that they can fool us and go get uh, a Hail Mary hire in Petrino, which I hope it works out, but I'm not sold on it. But a Hail Mary hire will get us all hyped up and then we spend the same money we always been spending. So we go four and eight. It ain't no difference because they collected the money regardless. So we're not setting the expectations as a fan for the program overall. And then we're soft about it as well. And how can we expect to have a consistent program if we're not being consistent as fans with our expectations for greatness? That's the one. Um, in regards to the team, unfortunately, the year is lost. I hope that he plays a lot of the younger players and give them opportunity to be on the floor. And the reason why I think the season is lost at this point now, what's so different about this team in comparison to the last three years is that even when we were struggling, we were competitive. And their effort was always there. We just used to make mistakes. But now we're not only making mistakes, but we're not competitive. There are players that are not given the effort. The effort is not even across the team. And the thing that drives me so crazy when I watch the team is their positioning for defensive rebound is one of the most atrocious things I've seen. I've never seen so many lucky bounces go to the other team because we're not in position to get the rebounds properly. That Every time we get momentum, we shoot ourselves right in the foot every time. We'll get momentum. We could be down by 12. We'll get within three, then jack up a bull crap shot. And the same guy who jacked up the bull crap shot will get beat on the play, easy layup or easy dunk and one. Now, instead of it being a potentially a one-point game or a tie game, now it's a seven-point game. Momentum loss. That has happened for every game that we've lost, even with the games we got blown out in. We start off with good, like against Auburn. We was up 11 to 5. We could have been up 14 to 5. Instead, we made a mistake, turnover, they get the ball and score. Momentum killed. We kill our own momentum, our own momentum on the floor every single game. And I, I'm, I'm pretty much lost for words. It is so disappointing. Y'all made so many valid points. Like every time we have expectations of a high note, we get disappointed. When we don't have expectations, then that's when you perform. And that's a sign of an inconsistent program. Facts. That's facts, man. We appreciate you coming on and, and, and saying that, man. I got to fix all this because DZ dropped off. But, bro, that's, that's absolute 100% facts, man. Uh, we gotta we gotta expect more uh, from our fan base, man. We can't just sit back and just accept what they give us, and that's what they want us mm -hmm. to do. And it's just not gonna happen. Hey, G Holmes, you got you in the what building, up, baby. How was the comedy show, man? man? Hey, man, it was straight, bro. I don't know what's up with my feed. I don't know what's up with it, man. The more people get on it, my feed get terrible. Let's go get my trash. Hey man, what you gonna do? I'm a hot one. Hey baby, we'll holler hey, to you later, yeah, man. You, hey, have a good right. one. Bye -bye. Appreciate you. I'm gonna be in the background. All right. Hey man, let me tell you something, bro. Is this is what I see when I look at this team, man? I'm almost embarrassed. I'm looking out here with these dudes out here with these fingernails painted, all these different hair colors, and all it is trying to be these pre Madonna. Uh, Brody out here looking man. like a bunch of Meshack Taylors on designing women. And I said what I said. You know what I'm saying? Y'all dudes is soft. Y'all dudes is soft. And you out here trying to look out. You terrible. You know what I'm saying? Now, clip that up and say it. You know, And I don't care what nobody say. They are acting and playing terrible. I mean, absolutely terrible. It's almost like you're watching a high school game with you know the way that they playing it's, it's like watching high schoolers play really yeah that's i mean that's that's what you're putting out on the floor this is a direct reflection of trying to flip a team every year you try to flip a team every single year and you don't build something you ain't arkansas is not gonna be pulling those type of blue chip players when you can have these one and dones and all this type of stuff right here there's no player development and if you don't have a coach that can develop players within a system 
you're going to fail. Eric Musselman is just now, we've been talking about it. Go back and pull the receipts. We've been talking about, yo, y'all need to get in a zone. Play a zone. Play a zone defense. If Joseph Pinion can't play 1v1, what do you do? But you need him on the floor because he's a shooter. What do you do? You play a zone. That way it kind of masks you know, it masks the, the, the fact that he can't guard a guy because he has immediate help. He has a guy that's watching his guy too. In a zone, two players are watching the one player that has the ball, so he's not going to get ran by. All of a sudden, now they're playing zone for the first time. I ain't never seen Musk go into a zone. Have you guys? When's no, the last nope. time y'all seen Musk in a zone? But he ain't got never. no dogs. He ain't got nobody that can really play defense, though. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. But he wanted to try to stay in this. Now he's been getting his panties pulled down, and all of a sudden now, oh, you losing. Oh, my God, we got to oh change something. God. Come on now. Yeah, I'm just saying it is nah, what it you is. Spin man. Facts, G. Yeah, you, you spin facts, G. I want to hear what DZ got to say to be real because I know he mad. Hey, we're gonna let DZ hey. get off and then we're gonna do it around the horn on this question right here from Derek Edwards because he said, honest Matt, question. Matter of fact, I don't even, I'm gonna save it to answer this. Can I go first on the around the horn to answer this question? All right, bet. So let's read the question. Everybody see it. Derek Edwards says, honest question. Does this type of podcast where we air dirty laundry, whether true or false, help or hurt the program? That said, love this podcast. Deezy, get him. First question. Let's let's answer Derek's question, man. First of all, shout out to Derek Edwards. We appreciate all love, whether it's good or bad. I can't tell what side you on uh, with this question, but I'm going to say this. <laughs> he said love the podcast. Joseph. Oh, okay, like okay. My bad, my bad. Compliment, hey, straight, right? Yeah, straight love, but <laughs> we'll I appreciate the alley oop because I'm finna dunk it. All right, listen to this. Joseph Pinion had his best game of the season after what event? That single handedly answers your question. We made Joseph Pinion ball out. I, I, I'm sorry to say it. If this is what holding your teammates accountable is, we need a clip for every player on the team after this show. We need a clip for Jermon Tre Mark. Keep going. We need a clip for battle. Get back hot. We need a clip for Devo. Do something. Like, what do you mean? We, we finna call everybody out. Every show. Because obviously that's making people step up. Obviously that's making people give more effort than they have all season. So that should answer the question alone. And that's all I got to say. Hey. Yeah. So we go. We gonna go. He said what he uh, said, we gonna, people. We gonna go around the horn since the DZ started. Um, uh, I'm just saying you gonna have you gonna have to get it last. But I know you like the you long winded, so that may work. <laughs> Box, you next, baby. What you think about this question, man? Um, I don't think it hurt. I think actually more of the people with common sense want to see something that's truthful. That, that that's not full of BS that you can speak on freely without having to be propaganda by other sources. And so <clears throat> I don't think it hurt nothing. I think honestly, recruits love the 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 honestness. I mean, when a recruit said they want to go to Arkansas, why they said it, why they say they love Sam Pittman? Because he honest. They really say they love Sam Pittman. That's when they love us because we honest. We're gonna tell you like it is. It ain't gonna be no sugarcoating, and we ain't gonna lie to you. But it is what it is. Now I'm gonna say one more thing off Devo. Then I, I did, off what DJ said. Then I'm gonna let y'all go. Pinion didn't play good today because of what we said. Pinion played good today because he actually got time to play. Just be honest. He got he got he, he got kept on the floor. He didn't get pulled out. He I mean now what we said made must change to a zone defense and play Pinion. And blocker. That's what happened. He gave Pinion the opportunity to get some extended minutes without jacking him. And he switched to he did something, he did something that he ain't never did before. He switched to his own. So that's what happened today with our podcast. Cause I, I fully believe that. He got some, he got one of his little Nick tech Nick, Nick, nerd guys looking at our podcast. Hey, hey, must this is what they said on on on, on Whoopi. We need to try this because they're on our head. That's what happened. <laughs> Gee, what do you think about this question, bro? 
Yo, mate, this is what I think. This is what, truly what I honestly think is I don't really care what everybody else think about it. I don't really care because the simple fact is you're asking a question is a podcast like this where we air out dirty laundry, whether true or false. Bro, we ain't never said nothing that ain't, ain't untrue. I mean, that's not true. So I don't even like the innuendo that I that I'm gonna be saying something that I know to be false. How can an opinion be false? It's the way I feel. Mm. Mm. I'll say that again. That way. How can my opinion be false? So we don't we don't say nothing that's false. So I killed your question right off the jump, man. Now, the rest of it, bruh, I, I don't really care what nobody really had to say about it. Guess what? I don't really care if none of these people, players, I don't care if they watch it because guess what? We've been doing this for years. We've been talking to amongst ourselves for years, just like we talking now. That's the why it seems so authentic because it is. I've been saying this type of stuff. We've been talking like this to each other, but we just opened up a window and let you sucker see it. Mm. Now it's all of a sudden our fault. No, we provide a platform for real fans just like us. If you want to come and say your opinion, your opinion is never true or false. It's yours. So get off my line with that, man. I said... What I say. What I say. What I say. What he way. say. That what he say. Hey. He the stutter. Mo. Hey. Hit us Man. off, baby. Go on, give us Derek. Give Man. Derek his answer. That was his flowers. Man, hey, buddy, Derek, I see, you, Edwards. I see you in the uh, green room, man. Just hang out there, man. We gonna bring you up in a minute. Man, listen, man. I'm on the same boat as G. I I couldn't care less what you think about it because. Like he said, his opinion and my opinion, your opinion, we all got them. They just like, ho <laughs> they ain't gonna say that. It's a family. They just show. like, they just like <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, we all you got them. Yeah, we all got them. <laughs> That's what it is. But this is the thing. This is the beauty of this show, bro. In a matter of six to seven months, y'all have completely disrupted the Arkansas fan base in the most beautiful way. Twenty twenty four. 2024 is going to be the year of exposure and truth telling. You get what I'm saying? Hey, if they don't like it, tell them to step it up. Point blank period. Ain't nobody airing out dirty laundry. We, we see the performance on the TV every weekend. We spend money for this. I buy season tickets to Arkansas games and don't get nothing in return. If I'm airing out dirty laundry for telling how I feel, like G said, my opinion on how I feel and what I see, Bro, zero, 11 minutes and zero points and zero stats is not dirty laundry. 26 minutes and seven points and three from 10 from the field is not dirty laundry. 22 minutes, twinkle toes, zero for three from the field, no points is not dirty laundry. That's facts. That's, that's a non-negotiable and arguable fact. If you feel like you don't like to hear facts, stats, and the thing is, bro, everything we spit, we got facts behind it. We got stats. We form we form opinions of factual information. And the fact of the matter is, Arkansas just got smashed 90 to 68 by the Florida Gators. They 0 and that 3 in the SEC. A fact. That's a fact. Ain't nobody airing out dirty laundry. And and another thing is, when Pooh Paul Dad came on here and set it off in this joint, he Speak was spitting facts. Speak on Those it. are the facts that his son experienced and his family experienced. You can't discount that. Mm. So what y'all need mm. to do is get with it or get lost because this up. The Woo Pig podcast Woo. is up. We yeah. ain't come. We ain't going nowhere. You gonna be mad for a long time, man. Man, that's what hey, they, they, they gonna they gonna stay get, mad. They can, get that they can catch on. a tea bag. <laughs> Go in nowhere. We ain't hey, hey. going nowhere. <laughs> you, we can't be stopped. Man, because hey, guess what? Else, they should catch a tea bag all 2024. Now, hey, because this this go here go another deal. 
Hey, man, you already had your with, chance to cook, man. You, it's your, oh, you, man, you got to come back. Hey, man, <laughs> hey, man, well, they told me I got a lot on my heart, bro. It was a long, it was a long bro, it was a long ride. But another thing is this. We don't work for nobody. You know who, mm-hmm. you know who we work for? We work for us. We own mm. everything. You feel me? We got paperwork down there at the state that say it. So guess what? You gonna write the owners? Yeah, holler at me and OD and see where your mm. where your suggestion go. File thirteen, baby. Because <laughs> guess what? Uh... Do you understand how many people have come at us and in our DMs telling us what we need to do? Man, you guys might wanna. Hey, man, you might wanna be careful. Uh, you might not wanna. Uh, uh, Y'all may be careful because, you know, the people up on the hill, they watching. Man, I I don't care because I don't work for none of them. And they can't tell us how to feel and they can't shut us up. Because when we hear it, we're going to get it to you raw like we do. Mm. So, mm-hmm. man, bro, I, I, I'm telling y'all, we coming. We coming. Mm. I'm telling you. Y'all going to either get on or get ran over. Man. All right, man. So it's my turn to cook, man. And I'm going to keep mine real simple, man. It's like this. And I'm going I'm to re- repeat my man's question here. Does this type of podcast where we air dirty laundry hurt the program? Who cares? Who cares if it does? Because guess what? Just like everybody has said, you think Poo Paul Daddy coming on this podcast and, 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 and validating what we said, how many other daddies you think actually talk to us? How many? I promise you, it ain't just one. It ain't just one. So if we air dirty laundry, it need to be aired. Because guess what? This is the barbershop. This is what happens in the barbershop. All the rumors that ain't really rumors that's really true, it's at the barbershop. Now, you guys get to come to the barbershop where we talk about the Arkansas Razorbacks, and we get to air their dirty laundry. So if you don't want your dirty laundry aired, air, hey, wash your clothes, baby. Clean, clean your dishes. Handle your house. <laughs> Because we're going to talk about it. So hmm. in, in, until you start doing right by everybody on that hill and playing the best players, stop recruiting all these bums. I shouldn't say that. Let me let me, let me walk. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Stop recruiting all these bums. <laughs> Giving them half a million dollars. Bruh, they can't even – they can't play. What you doing? My man played three games and you give him 300000 $300, Man, you can you can kick rocks. You think I'm about to give you three hundred thousand dollars for a tight end, bruh? All right, <laughs> you retarded. I'm not giving yeah. no three hundred thousand dollars to no tight end. Come on, the, the dirty laundry needs to get aired. It That's needs right. to get aired. Yeah, and it does. can't nobody stop us from saying what we want to say. All you Twitter trolls, JC Hoops, I'm calling you out. JC Hoops, you're on Twitter running your liquors. Oh, you got 11,000 Twitter followers, but you still commenting about the Woo Pig podcast. Bruh, who, know, who is anybody in here know JC Hoops? We don't rock with you. Nah. You can't come to the barbershop. But I tell you I- what. I, hey, I tell you what, oh. The Woo Pig podcast living rent free in all of them, head. All of them. All of them. Y'all big, man. All of them. Big man, y'all on Twitter right now. Y'all stream. Y'all sitting there watching us. We streaming on YouTube, <laughs> Facebook, Twitter, Twitch. Baby, we even on Rumble. Oh. Uh, Holla, I'm just saying. You can't be stopped. It's your time to cook. What you baby. Gotta say, baby. It's your time to cook. All right. All right, guys. Now, if you will allow me. Hey, the floor I'm is yours, take, man. You know, I'm going to take a middle course in this. All right. Because I'm going to cool. say this. And I'm, I'm going to say this, guys. And I want to say this as somebody who is a trained journalist. Believe it or not, I've been in the business since the 90s. And I cover sports all over Arkansas. So I know the games. 
Now, of course, most of my time was back in the newspaper days. It wasn't so much in this multimedia, uh, you know, thing today. But a lot, a lot of these things you guys are experiencing now, I, I can see both sides. So first, let me go on, go in on the critics of the whoop. Hey, somebody got a TV playing. Lived in Arkansas. Been a somebody got a, somebody got a TV playing. sports and outside of sports. There is a lot of dirty laundry that needs to be aired. And as a journalist, I feel like it's a good thing for it to be aired. Because this tendency to kind of just cover up everything, you know, it, it it's, it's more the problem in Arkansas than the solution. So when I first heard of you guys, I was all for it because, you know, I, I knew you, as brothers, you know, y'all going to come with a certain honesty, a certain rawness that really we need. Like part of the problem with the Arkansas sports journalist thing, you got guys like you guys make fun of John Neighbors all the time, but he's just a sample. I mean, these guys are boring and and they're bought out. You know they're not gonna bring truth to the to the um to the fans, and even before the Woo Pig got in it, you go on a lot of these sites and stuff. Even the regular Razorbacks fans, like with the football season, felt betrayed because all they heard all off season was, "Oh yeah, this is the best, most talented team we've ever had at Arkansas, and you know everything's gonna be great. We're gonna go to the national championship, and this is our year to win the West, and all of that." All right, but but then the season happened and everything blew up in the face and the fans were sitting around wondering like, how come nobody told us what we were dealing with? You know? And and so you guys brought a breath of fresh air in a lot of ways to come in and say certain things and then give a voice to players, uh, you know, the parents, other fans that, you know, aren't being heard critics of, of the program, you know, all those things are necessary and good. And uh, say, for example, with um, Sam Pittman in football, you guys may remember that big controversy they had between um, the guy that used to play for the Patriots, he's a state senator now, and uh, Pittman, when Pittman quit Twitter, because they said that he was being too hard on Pittman or Pittman couldn't take the criticism, so he deleted his Twitter account. That wasn't the Woo Pig podcast. That was a state senator that mm. was calling them out. And, you know, um, Sam, and, the, and, and that to me, that was the moment that their whole season fell apart. Because even once they beat Florida, Sam had to stand up there and say, you know, that's one thing I can say about you guys, you know, is that when the times get tough, you can you can take the criticism and keep on going. Well, how are you going to say that to your players and you got out of your Twitter account because somebody called you fat on Twitter? What kind of leader and what kind of example are you showing? And um, I wish I could think of the guy's name. But, you know, he, he called Pittman out on that, too. And and after that, the players end up quitting are you, are you for the rest of the season, the season pretty much because they, Man, they had a leader that wasn't, you know, be, he wasn't living up to what he was saying or what he should be as a leader on that football team. And that's exactly what happened to the football team. And it looks like you guys are frozen. Time. I don't even know if y'all still with me or not, but um, I'll leave it at <laughs> we, that. We, we wait for you to land I would the like plane, to offer bro. some criticism yeah, yeah, on you guys. Plane, bro. You, you, you all all it's constructive yeah, criticism that I hope that you guys can take it, right. you know, in the spirit that I'm giving it, because I do think y'all have done some things wrong and just kind of, you know, been a little too knucklehead at times. But, you know, I understand where y'all coming from, too. <laughs> but we ain't, yeah. we ain't trying to be right. That's the thing. We, trying, we, yeah. we, we, we trying to be us. We we yeah. ain't trying to be right. We ain't trying to be journalists. We want people to have yeah. to be able to come in and say what they want to say, right? Yeah. Like you came in, yeah. you wanted to say I what you wanted to say. Everybody, now nah, we ain't kick you out. We're sitting here talking to you. But I'm still uh, to you. I am going to go to my guy over here, Button, because he's been trying to get on for a minute. Hold on. Hold on. 
Hold on. What's going on? He, got to he got to turn his computer down. It's not me. Turn his computer down. That's uh. I'm I'm just uh, that was I'm just saying. Okay, but talk to us, all right. dog. How, how you doing tonight, man? I'm doing all right. You know, the bad loss and everything, but uh, you know, what do you do? Uh, this question here. It says, uh, does this type of podcast help or hurt the program, basically? Yeah. And uh, yeah. when y'all talk about opinion, I mean, it obviously helped, right? <laughs> you know? I mean, I don't think that he was in there for, you know, just because Musk thought about it. I mean, it, you know, this influenced a decision, you know? And uh, so does it help or hurt? It can do both, I guess, but uh, it it definitely shows that you know, yeah, it does help. They need criticism. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. They Let me do. ask you another nobody, question, buddy. Since you since you knew on the criticism. show, nobody. All right, man. Tell tell me what you think about our show, man. Since your first time coming on there, I don't think I've ever seen you on here before, man. All right, tell check us, it out. Tell us how you when think. I first seen you... this. When I first seen this, I wanted on this show. I was like, I got to get up here and talk with these guys because uh, <laughs> I, I feel like, you know, you, you got to be real, you know? Thanks. And, uh, yeah. So I, I enjoy the heck out of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. We, we, well, appreciate, we appreciate it. Man. He pretty yeah. much said he felt like family from, from the start. He said he, said he felt like family from the jump. Hey, man. Pretty much. We, we pretty got, much. We're going we gonna to celebrate hey, if, little if Joker, man. All, we gonna celebrate little Joker's one year. Uh, I mean, one month membership, man. It's his anniversary, man. He said, "Keep doing what you're doing." Hey, baby, he man, renewed his his uh his membership, man. We appreciate the support of the channel, man. Bro, we appreciate it, man. Let but me yo, go here. I gotta, ain't... I gotta read some super chats. Give me a second, bro. Hey, I got one from Boss Hall. He said, "Tell the team to stop playing on on TV because ESPN is saying the same stuff we saying." Facts. Facts. Mm. Hmm. My guy fade away jumper. Nah, fade away forever. He didn't say nothing, but he hit us with a super chat. He did say something <laughs> else. I'm going to go back and get his comment here in just a second. Boss Hog hit us with another super chat. He said, man, Woo Pig is here to stay. We ain't going nowhere. You heard me. Let me go find my guy. Uh, he super chatted, but then he said something afterwards. So I want to I want to make sure I go find him real quick. What was his name? Fade away. Fade away fade man, out, I think. Hey, bro. Hey, what y'all don't know is uh, what what he say? Who pig? We locked Rock. in from Little Rock to Texas every night. Yeah, say less. That's that's Baby, a fact. We appreciate you supporting the channel, big dog. Bro, now something else. I, I, something else I'm gonna tell y'all too is the criticism for me and Od. Man, when we when we very first started doing this. Oh, was like, I mean, I'm talking about before we was doing live shows, we was recording them joints, man, and and just really digging it out of the mud. People were saying little stuff. You had some people that was rocking, some people that was saying substantially. And oh was like, hey, man, you, did you see what so-and-so said? This is what I told him, and he'll right there, he'll tell you. I said, look here, man, whenever people start hating on you, and and trying to down what you're doing is two things that's happening it's jealousy and envy they're jealous because you are doing something that they can't do or are too afraid to do and they're envious of you because other people are actually listening so they hate on you so they get on here and they get these little accounts and they try to say you know, try to make other people feel the way that they do. And this was I, this is what I told, oh, I said, you know what, bro? I said, man, I'll take a hundred of them dudes because if I got a hundred of them that's hating, man, I got a hundred thousand that ain't. So we trying to pick up as many of you suckers as possible because guess what you got to do to hate on me? You got to watch me. And so when you watch it. me trying to hate it's paying me. Remember that. We appreciate you watching. And we appreciate Absolutely. your support. So keep hating, baby. 
Facts. Now, what one thing I do wanna I wanna jump back into my my question to everybody. We're gonna do another around the horn, man. Do you guys think that Musselman has done a bad job of building the team we have this year? Anybody can go first. It don't matter. Building the team. DZ, you started it last time. We might as well keep the party going with you this time. That'll work. All right, bet. So I'm going to say it like this. Of course. I mean, he said something in the post-game pressure that really affected me. Because we talked about the whole zone and him only doing it for three days. He literally told us in the post-game pressure today that we have never played zone at Arkansas. So what that means is we've never even practiced zone in Arkansas. So that, that means when we're seeing all these inefficiencies on how to beat the zone, it's because we literally haven't even seen it until the games. And that's that's mm. that's lackluster as a coach, mm. man. I'm going to keep it real. He said something about um, these players are having trouble um, running our offense. What is our offense? From year to right. year in a must offense, if anybody in here can tell me what the must offense is, I would love to hear what it is. It seems like it changed every year. So, yes, he has done a bad job with building. Any, you can't build when you start over every season. There is no building. So that's he, my answer. He runs a version of the Milwaukee Bucks offense. If you notice, Musk always goes to N- NBA teams, and he be wearing they, they shirts. Last year we were running, I want to say, Golden States. Yep. This year we're running Milwaukee Bucks. So he ain't really got his own offense. So they running a version of Milwaukee Bucks offense. I don't see how you can run Milwaukee Bucks offense if you ain't got a Giannis. Hey, or or uh, Dame Dillard. <laughs> That's uh, a fact, DZ. Box, what you think, man? I don't think the way he building a team is sustainable because every year he getting more and more away from high school players that he got to develop. He can't develop. That's when he try to get established players. And so the way he builds a team is not sustainable. I agree with that. You can't get rid of every player every year, the freshmen that don't pan out without giving them chances to grow uh, as a player. Uh, you just can't get rid of them. Hey, Button, what do you think about that, man? Well, you got, you know, you people say, uh, well, if we had so-and-so from last year, you know, or, or this other player from last year, we don't got that. So they ain't building a program. It's a new thing every year. And, uh, you know, aside from Devo and, you know, people that was on the bench. But, uh, you know, we we need people to stick around. And I don't know if he can do that. Mm. You know? Oh. I don't know if he can keep people around. Mm-hmm. We had Ball's players out. that was on Ball's the bench out. leave. You know, I don't know how good they're doing, but, you know, it's just people that know the program. You can't just have one player like Devo, you know. I remember back in the day, you would Corey Beck and uh, Thurman, Corliss, you know. Th- those cats was around for, you know, a couple years. And juniors and seniors and stuff. And you ain't building anything if it's, if it's different every year. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, man. Appreciate that comment. G. I feel like you can't, I mean, it's just really a, a echo. You can't build a team whenever you 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 just flip it over every year. You can't do that. And you gotta have some core base. If you're gonna flip, you're gonna have to you have to maintain some some type of core of player that can actually mentor. Who's who's who they're gonna get mentor? You know. Nobody. Who who's left from last year? Devo. He can't get to nobody. <laughs> you see what his mentor has got? He gonna be mad. What 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 what, what? 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 I mean, you think about it. What's left on the team? Devo. Now you got four players painting their nails, everybody dyeing their hair. Wasn't nobody dyeing their hair and doing all that crazy mess? That's what we kept. Yeah. So, no, you can't do that. You're going to have to 
you need some dogs. It ain't nobody out there that I think that I would be like, you know what? They're going to go in here and they're going to fight. Literally. <clears throat> they're going to fight for a win. So, yeah. no, nah, I don't think it's not sustainable. As long as we keep out here going and getting them, uh, you know. Whoa, sweet thing. <laughs> Devo, hey, you going to make Devo mad, bro. Bruh. Hey, let's boy, do it. So that boy he gonna have like that, uh, opinion. Dude. Hey, Devo is gonna have skulls and bones tattooed on his fingernails for the next game. Because <laughs> hey, he gonna be he mad. Can score twenty with him. Maybe he can score twenty. Not maybe not. Man. Hey, hey, man. You gotta stop Listen, saying his man. name. His name is now Sweet Thing or Sweet D, Sweet whatever y'all hey. want to call him. <laughs> Pause. Come on, man. Hey. <laughs> Pause. <laughs> Heavy on the pause. <laughs> hey, but uh, hey, what I'm, I just said. Gonna, I'm just gonna answer the question, man. I think that we getting confused with. I, I think we getting the term building a team confused with assembling a team, because in the era of NIL, we're not building teams. In, I mean, we're not developing teams anymore. We're assembling teams. Now, my personal opinion is. Musselman did an exceptional job assembling a team of shooters and skilled players. Like, we got more guards on this team than anything, and that's the problem. Bro, we literally have maybe seven to eight guards and no, nothing but forwards. We don't even have a center. You know what I'm saying? That's the fact of the matter. He doesn't have the players to play his scheme, and whatever scheme that is, it's not working. And the, another fact of the matter is, He's not coaching these players. He's allowing them to play in a, 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 a system that is all over the place. Of course, he wants to carry the torch of Nolan Richardson and play 40 minutes of hell. That's why they didn't learn the zone, because we're not traditionally known for zone defense at Arkansas. We are a pressure, defensive pressure team. But when your players aren't getting into a rhythm and not making shots, they're not going to have the enthusiasm or energy to play defense, point blank, period. And then when you're not getting back on D or uh, when you when your team, when other teams are getting back on defense and getting set in a zone, and DZ made a great point, bro. If your, if your team has never seen zone in practice, they're not going to know what to do in the game when all they see is a zone. So, bro, I think this is 100% on coaching. Just like I feel like the Arkansas team, it's on coaches, bro. We got players. Look at the teams we right. beat. We beat we beat Kentucky. I mean, no, we beat Duke. We beat we beat Vanderbilt for Purdue? God's sake. You mean Purdue? And look at Purdue. some of the teams we lost to. Look at some of the teams we lost to. UNC Greensboro. Oklahoma. These these are good teams, don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is Musselman's lack of coaching has led to a large amount of inconsistency with this team. We got talent. We just don't have consistent play or coaching, period. That's facts. And before I go to the next one, I'm going to read my super chat. My guy here, Twan, hit us with a super chat. Hey, appreciate you uh, for supporting the channel. That's uh, my bad, Twan, two times. I feel bad for Mark. He was a big part of Houston's success, and his move is not working out for him. He's been a consistent guy with nothing to show for. Man. Hey, man, I, I agree with that, man. Um, he has been the one constant guy on the squad that comes to play every single game. And he consistently puts up points. I think he dribbles a lot. He pounds the rock a lot. Um, I will say that about him, but overall, he's the, definitely the kind of guy you want on the team. And uh, he, he's showing that he can score. He didn't get that chance at Houston. He only had average like 10 points, but Houston had a squad, though. Uh, but, yeah, man, uh, I agree with that 100%. Uh, but the, the, the question that was on the table was, is Musk building the program? And I think we didn't beat that uh, to death. So I ain't even yeah. gonna I ain't even gonna jump in and answer that question. Um, I'm just saying, did you want to chime in on that question? And if not, uh, DZ has one last question for around the horn. 
Uh, yeah, uh, my man just pretty much said what I was going to say. Uh, I think Musk kind of blew some things as a GM, stacking too many guards. You know, I know we thought we'd get a couple of big men that chose to go elsewhere. We didn't get it. And then he kind of forced Mikhail away, and I think things like that are hurting us. Somebody said, I don't know where I saw this at, but if you think about all the players we wanted that we didn't get, a lot of them, they not doing good. The Nelson dude that we wanted so bad uh, that plays for uh, Alabama, he ain't doing that good. Right. A lot of them oh. players that we really wanted, they not doing that good. Nelson would have did better at Arkansas than Alabama because they got too many talent for him at Alabama for him to do anything. Arkansas, we needed him in Arkansas more than they needed him in Alabama. To my uh, Grant Nelson? Yeah. Yes. I, I, I kind of sort of agree with that, yeah. Better, he's a better fit for Musk's offense. Yeah. Who knows the way what Musk play, that? guys? Yeah, well, but, uh, I mean, what is that? Yeah. DZ, what was your question, well, bro? Around the horn with DZ. This is the last one for the night, fellas. Mm. All right. Um so my question is this. So let's say you're a coach. We don't got to give a super long answer, but this is something deep that I want to think about or I want y'all to think about. If you was a coach and your team was struggling, do you think it's better to bench your best players to show them a lesson or to let them play and get more experience and get better and try to find some type of chemistry? What would y'all do if y'all was a head coach and y'all was dealing with these problems? Who want to go first? I go first. I'll... All right, go ahead, box. Go ahead. First, off, first off, you like they did us in the day. You run the ever living shit out of them in practice. Hey man, come on man, come on, Doc <laughs> Box, come on, bro. I said, excuse me. I mean, but get get over that. You run them suckers like they ain't never ran before their life. You run bleachers. You run gassers. You run. You run line drills. Then you bench them. To the next <laughs> show a podcast like this and let them hear what everybody's saying and, and you know and hope that that's gonna do something for them because i mean it would me if i heard people talking you know talking bad on me saying how bad i was performing i mean i'd feel a little bit of pressure to to step it up everybody up there on that team see us they hear us oh yeah i promise you yeah. they on the, they on the plane well, right I mean, watching us they need to I got to keep that word pressure in the back of my mind because I like that. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to go and then I'm going to let G and uh, O end it. But, bro, pressure bust pipes. Either and, and you know what else? Pressure make diamonds as well. What you decide to let that pressure do to you is on you as a man, as a player. If you can't stand the pressure, then you're going to fail at a lot of things in life because pressure, hey, life is pressure packed. Sports is pressure packed. If you can't understand or get the grasp of I'm in a high level situation playing SEC basketball and the pressure is on me to make to score points. And then when you get out in life and you got the pressure to feed your family, you're going to fail because you don't understand how to pivot. You don't understand how to look at yourself in the mirror and man up and get it done. If you don't get it done, somebody else is going to get it done. Man, muscle man needs to find people that are going to get it done. He needs to look himself in the mirror and get it done. Point blank, period. Pressure bursts pipes or it makes diamonds. Arkansas needs to get it together and allow pressure to make diamonds, bro. We're going to keep applying pressure over here, man. Mm. And let them decide what they do with it. So uh, I'm just saying we're going to let you answer that question next, man. We need to well, repeat the question. No, I got it. Okay. Uh, one one of my big criticisms must too is that, that um, this thing he's got about uh, yanking guys out of the out of the lineup after they make one mistake, and and more than anything, I think that's what's one of the things that's really hurting this team. You know, I, other people have said you know basketball is a game of flow, and you can't play. Once you get in the game, you make any mistakes, ball bounce off your finger, you miss a shot, you know, whatever. Referee call a ticket tack foul on you, and then you get taken out of the game. That's what's wrong with battle. 
you know, it's, it's no reason for this team to be scoring uh, 66 points and stuff like that. It's got too many scores, too many capable scores, but Muss is getting in all these guys' heads by trying to motivate them through playing time. You know, if a guy got the talent and he puts in his work and practice to, to get a start and, and get on the court, you know, let him play out his minutes and see how it goes. You just can't you just can't yank guys in and out. That kills their morale, it kills their confidence, and it kills their spirit. And a lot of these guys are suffering from that right now. And it's something Muss has done in the past, and you have all these knuckleheads, you know, these regular commentators talking about, oh, yeah, Muss only uses six or seven guys. Well, you know, that might have been fine when he first came here because he had only six or seven guys capable of contributing. But right now, he, he's recruited all this talent. And rather than, you know, do something like Nolan would do, and a couple of teams we played this year have done the same thing, uh, rotate using 10-man lineups where they were platoon subs just so everybody would come in and get their minutes and get in the flow. And those teams are successful using that strategy. But Musk, again, he's got his ways. He's stuck in them. And he, he's using the wrong tactics, and, it, and it's messing up the, the confidence of a lot of the players. Oh, okay. So I'm going to go next, man. Um, and I've said this before. I'm not saying that this, this guy's a great coach. But if you see how hard his players play, because they know I'm going to get in the game. And I don't even know who, what this coach, what his name is, but the coach of Texas A&M, he has a Buzz system. Busy. Buzz Williams. Yeah, Buzz. Buzz William, okay. He has a system. Every player knows before the game when they are going to play. They don't even get asked to get checked in. They know what time their clock say. They run up, and they know who they're going in the game for. That is, I find, intuitive because... Everybody know I'm going to play. They know I'm not going to sit on the bench. They know all this work that I'm doing is not for nothing. And I watched them boys play today, man, and they played hard. They all played hard. They did. They got the dub. Yeah. Them boys play hard, man. And we got to play them. And I, I want to say we playing them next, maybe. Bro, yeah, yeah. that's January 16th, bro. That's We playing A&M. SEC they Network be- at 8 p.m. When I, when I tell break. you, bro, Arkansas better come. They better come with their hard hat because A&M play hard. And it could get ugly, bro. And I, I'm just I'm saying Musselman needs to build a system to where he includes all players, Joseph Pinion, L. Ellis. Everybody need to get on the court somehow, some way. He need to find a solution to make sure that these guys play and that he not losing them sitting on that bench, man. That, hey. That's the most frustrating part about this team, man. There's so many shooters on this team, it's ridiculous. But none of them see the court at the same time. He don't even know how to use them all. Yeah, facts. Hey, shout out Travis Adar, man. We ain't seen you in a good minute, man. What up, bro? He said, hey, guys, sorry I haven't been around. I just haven't had the patience <laughs> to deal with the second crap season in a row in six months. Continue to grow oh. the Woo Pig podcast, man. Salute to you, big dog. Appreciate your share, yeah. Dar, man. Thank you for supporting the channel. G, it's on you, baby. Hey, I got a question before we get off. It's going to be quick, so I hope I got quick answers. Who, I mean, I'll I start. Who we gonna do pa- y'all we gonna pa- we Pause you on this. I need G to answer DZ's last question. Oh, my bad. I, I thought he did. My bad. Go ahead. No, he didn't go. I thought he did. Well, mine is short and sweet. Good. I don't even care. What do you care I about? <laughs> I just want to win. <laughs> I just want to win. However you do it, I just want to win. win. We want to win. I said, "Oh man, mm-hmm. hey, we just want to win." I'm gonna tell you before before we go to your question box. I need everybody to close out the chat and hit the like button. We got two hundred and not two hundred and ten people in here. And I only got 94 likes. So that tells me that some people have come in here and then left. And ain't nobody hit the like button, man. Close out the chat. Hit the like button for your boys, man. 
hey, help us grow the Woo Pig podcast because clearly you like what I what we doing. The, the, the playoffs on TV, but you're still in here rocking with us, man. Close out the chat, hit the like button, come back. The chat is going to be there. It ain't going nowhere. All right, it ain't Box, going. hit the question, baby. All right, I'll start. I want to know who all y'all think should start Saturday. Man, we do I this every podcast, early. man. Yeah, man. but we ain't did it today. I said mine uh, earlier. Oh, my God. Well, it don't even matter. It yeah, don't dude. even matter. I'm, I wanna, I'm yeah, so dude. Ask, ask, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Evidently, oh, evidently, evidently, Greg got too drunk at the at the thing tonight, so forget about that question. <laughs> he all, he all, he want to argue with everybody. He don't even yeah, care. Forget about that question. I don't even care. <laughs> yeah, oh, okay. so, so just forget about that question. <laughs> next time, hey, 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 Od. Next time he go to a comedy show, I want you to pull an admin and don't let him on the show. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna we gonna answer the question anyway. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really care uh, who starts, but I want to see a change in the lineup. And I'm gonna tell you this, man. I want. Layton Blocker. I want Joseph Pena. I want Tremont Mark. I want Bacchiotomy and Trevin Brazil on the court. That's my starting five. Jalen Graham. Jalen Graham. Oh no. Give me give me give me bay fall for him. Bro, they gonna play here. hard. They gonna play hard. You want somebody to play hard, right? Ain't nobody gonna play hard in Bay Falls. Man, Bambi Legs ain't ready, to score bro. Points. Yeah, Bambi Legs can't do nothing. No, he can't you, hit free throws. Marks, he can't block shots. Yeah, but you, he just you got you got marks. Before you start arguing, box, go ahead and go ahead go yeah, ahead and get your lineup, box. He already did. Yeah, I already did. did. I just put yeah, I just put Bay Fall in and what's like. I'm not playing. Okay. I'm not starting Graham in, in Brazil on the same starting lineup. I'm bringing Graham off the bench. You have no choice. He's going to get you scoring off the bench. You're either going to play Graham or you're going to play Twinkle Toes. And Twinkle Toes, he he just don't seem to want to play ball this year. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's going on with him. He missed his brother, man. Yeah, I believe that 100%. He can go to I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Wrap it up, um, little baby. What are we going to do? What's your starting lineup? My starting five um, is um, – and this is why I just feel out of just the best five players on the team. And then before I name it, let me say this quickly. I, I'm a proponent of the platoon system with this much talent. So even if you don't start, you should be able to get another five that should come in and do regular rotation. Whoever have the best first, uh, first, you know, first part of the game, play down the stretch. But my best top five is uh, Devo, Marks, uh, I would put a blocker at, a blocker at point. No, no, I take that back. Not blocker, but um, um, what's the guy, the shooter? Talking about um, battle. Uh, battle. Khalif Battle. battle. Davenport. Khalif Man. Battle. Uh, Brazil at the four and Makai Mitchell at the five. He going to get in foul trouble, but let him get in there, be physical, use up his fouls, and then bring Graham in to help out. All right, DZ. I'm going to say this, and this is all I got to say to end it. Hey, if that is Hudson Clark in here, <laughs> steady calling me out, I'm going to say this, bro. If Jalen if Jalen Catalan win made a glass, you will already be selling Whoppers at Burger King by now. So count your <laughs> days, bro. Like, think about how many – think about how much scholarship time and playing time that you're taking away from the players behind you with actual talent, like – I don't right. want to give too much into it because that might even be Hudson Clark. But anyways, we, shout out to all our fans, man. That ain't Hudson Clark, man. Hey, man that's be, a man. troll, bro. Yeah. Come on, man. You shouldn't even hey. think about that, bro. All right. Yeah, but Glenn. hey, shout out all to good. our fans, man. All starting. Right, Who's your starting five? All right. Blocker, Devo, uh, Makai, and... I don't know. I, Blocker just has to be in there. You know, he, he's got – he makes the most explosive stuff out there. He hustles hard. 
the other four really I it don't matter to me. Okay. Yeah. Uh G, you wanna answer this last one and we're gonna wrap this thing up. I don't wanna answer. Right, I man. don't even care. I want, I want the best five. I don't care who it is. Maybe we on a three game losing streak. Maybe we talking about who we want to start. Somebody that can win. <laughs> Man, that's facts. This dude. Hey, man, well, I'm going to say this. I appreciate everybody, man, for rocking out with us, man, and uh, enjoying what we do, man. Uh, this is truly uh, something that we did that we thought up in the middle of the night, man. Me and G on the phone, man, 2 o'clock in the morning. Like, bro, we should just do a podcast about these hogs, and, man, we did it. And we grew this thing from, from nothing to something, and it's all because of you guys and – I ain't worried about not one hater on tr- on Twitter or Huss and Clark in the comments. I said what I said, man. And that's what we all that's that's what this podcast is about. Anybody can come up and they can say what they want to say, how they want to say it, as long as they keep it clean. And that's what this podcast is for. And we're gonna continue to do what we do. So if you wanna if you wanna come up and kick it with us, you welcome. If you wanna say whatever you wanna say in the comments, we love that too. But we ain't going to be stopped by none of these mayonnaise boys out here. These, hmm. I ain't even going to say what next thing I want to say. We're going to do what we do. You know what I'm we saying? Do you got all the spices when you come over here. We, we, we got the 11 herbs and spices like KFC, baby. We ain't giving it to you. We ain't giving you the jacked up potato salad. Anyway, <laughs> don't forget to comment, <laughs> like, and subscribe. <laughs> G, take us home, Who baby. Made? Yo, man. First off, let me start by giving our, our sponsor, 3M Electric, a shout out. They are serving Northwest Arkansas. They are all things for commercial and residential electrical contracting. These guys are SD, VOSB. That means a service disabled veteran owned small business. Hey, man, these guys are uh, dependable and reliable, and no job is too big or too small. So, for all of your electrical needs, Get the guys over there at 3M Electrical Call. That number is 479-408-9865. Again, that's 479-408-9865. And tell them that the Woo Pig Podcast sent you. Look here, man. Y'all know what it is, man. I second everything my brother said. We appreciate everybody. Even the haters, man. You got to have them. You got to have them, and we appreciate you. But we ain't changing nothing, baby. We ain't changing nothing. If anything, we're going to give you some more. And we appreciate everybody up on here, this panel. You look at this panel, man. This is this is a panel from people from everywhere, man. And we respect all of them. All of them. We don't care nothing about it. And matter of fact, man, I got something real special for y'all coming Monday. I got my white boy Rick coming on the show. The story I told y'all the other night, hey, he coming on the show, baby. And we're going to show you. When you see him, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, G. Holmes rocks with him. And that dude can ball. White boy Rick coming on the show. So look here, man. Joseph Pinion, you didn't score 20, but you better come get us, man, because we accepted your challenge, baby. We coming up on the hill, and we're going to do it for $1,000. All for charity, baby. And with that, yo, I said what I said, and I'm out. Yeah, it's the 501, baby. Uh-huh. You know how we get down on the Woo Pig Podcast. Woo! Shout out OD, shout out G Holmes, it's the best. Big sexy! Do it! Woo! Yeah! yeah. Woo! Yeah! yeah.